Welcome to Goldfish on Games, where today we're checking out this. But the real question is, what is it? This is something I recently got from AliExpress. And the name they gave it was the Vintage 3.5 inch LCD display CRT computer model handheld game console support network TV built in 180 games with mic speaker. Whew, that's a mouthful, and it doesn't really help trying to work out what it is. And let's see if looking around will help. And as we can see, we have the described 3.5 inch display, not too sure of the resolution. The monitor, and for a lack of a better word, the computer, are physically connected together, with the bottom half having three buttons, plus, minus, and escape. We also find a micro SD slot on the front. Now if we go around the back, we find a whole host of ports for all the parts that came with it, including this tiny two-button mouse, a little speaker, and a microphone. And also this keyboard that does nothing on this side, but if we flip it over, we have a controller. And yes, between the XP logo on the front and the Nintendo logo on the keyboard, not a single copyright was respected in the making of this product. Connecting it up does require looking at the instructions. As well, there's just three plug types and seven connections. As this one is power, then we have mic, video out, controller, and then mouse. And then on the monitor, we have video in, and then audio out. There will be a quiz at the end, so please take notes. With it all connected, we can then hold down the plus button to turn on the monitor. And that message we get is basically saying there's no input, as the computer part has to be turned on independently with the minus button. And yep, that was the XP boot logo and sound, and nope, that is not XP running, not even close. To partially answer the question posted at the start of the video, this is some weird multimedia style device. Because as we can see, we have a few selections. We can play videos, and it came with an interesting selection of videos to show it off. But due to the low resolution of the device and the tiny text window that they give you, as well as the fact that it's all in Chinese, it makes it quite difficult to work out what the supplied files are actually called. And to be honest, even after playing some of them, I wasn't sure what they were. The files have to be in a limited motion JPEG AVI format for them to work. But it came with software that will help convert it to the right format for you, if you just want to trust some random exe you found on the SD card. The speaker is not good, not very good at all. In fact, I think they managed to find a long forgotten warehouse of cheap 80s headphone speakers and press them into use. And if you want to listen to these videos louder or quieter, then you can actually use the mouse buttons to change the volume, with one putting it up and the other putting it down, and that's the only use for the mouse. You can use it to play music, which are just regular MP3 files and it has a far more limited provided selection than we saw with the videos. Again, no idea who any of these people are, or why you might want to listen to them on the tiniest speaker currently known to exist. You can even look at pictures, and again, they provided a number of them. And it begs the question, why did they include Firefox backgrounds? The others I mostly get, they're a mix of desktop backgrounds to try and fool people into thinking this is a real computer. It has a few games, and you cannot forget the anime images. But the Firefox ones, they still confuse me. And what's cool is that any of the pictures that's on the device can also be used as the background. The icon that looks like it could be for a browser is in fact the settings menu. And I've managed to work out one of them is for changing the background, another can change the time, 
and the others I'm not too sure of as I was having great difficulties in getting a clear picture for Google Translate to try and lock onto. Now we've been using the controller to interact with the menu, but really it's for the games. And what sort of games with a no name, no brand and no Fs given machine like this play? Well going by the naming convention on the games menu, your guess is as good as mine. But after playing a few of them, it becomes quite obvious what it is. It's a Famiclone. I'm not sure if there's actual Famiclone hardware inside or if it's emulation, but it does have 180 games on it. And you'll have to use the docs to match up those unfortunately named files to the games. And because this is Goldfish on games, we're going to have to play a few of them. If just to see or hear what the quality of the emulation or Famiclone hardware is. Plus it gives us a chance to put that controller through its paces. As I've come to expect from these sort of devices, it has a mix of homebrew, ROM hacks and just outright pirated games. And they haven't even gone to the bother of scrubbing any of the copyright notices from them. And after you've played a game for a little bit, you can then move on to the next one by hitting either the minus button or the escape button, and that will return you to the game selection. And eventually we'd come across Super Mario Bros. 3. Which is quite good as it gives us a nice baseline for working out how good this is. And I think as we can hear, this is not right. And it's not just the provided speaker, because we can switch to some better ones, as it actually provides a stereo output if you use the microphone jack. And that audio issue is still there. So whatever they're using to play these Famicom games, it's not perfect at all. Which continues in a few other well-known games. And as I was playing them, I noticed something interesting with the controller, as it has four face buttons. Now A and C are basically the same in game, but B and D are actually slightly different. As one of them will seem to do a large jump, and the other a short. Now I'm not sure if they set it up to send a long and short presses depending on the button, which is then translated into the game, but if they have, that might mess up other games that are expecting you to hold down the buttons, so I'm honestly not sure how they've set this up. And sticking with the controller, all the buttons are rubber, so they do feel a little bit off. It's like trying to play a controller that's just made up of start and select buttons. Now I can't say it's the worst controller I've ever used, but it's not one I would want to actively return to. So let's sit back and bask in a montage of just a few of the 180 games that it came with.
have noticed that every so often there would be some directly captured video. And that turned out to be surprisingly easy to do, as the computer and monitor parts aren't internally connected. It uses one of those cables that we set up at the start of the video. This means I can use a quite simple cable to get video directly out of it, and then into my capture setup, or even to my TV set. And this actually outputs much better video quality than my NES. Just a shame about the audio quality. But this also means that I can connect any composite device to the monitor. It's a standard 3 pole, 3.5 inch millimeter jack with a common ground. So you just have to guess which one is the video and the mono audio output. But once you've done that, you're away, and you can just use the same cable on the computer side or on the monitor side. As hinted earlier, the SD card has all the ROMs, videos, pictures and music files on it, all in named folders, and includes a few docs on how to connect the device up as well as use it so it is actually quite nicely laid out. But what it doesn't seem to have is the OS on it, so I'm guessing it has to be on a flash chip on the device itself. I had considered opening this up, but I just know that I would never be able to get it back together again. It just looks like one of those devices that will just ping parts everywhere. So maybe I should pass this on to another channel to tear it down and try and work out what it's actually running. As other than that, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with this thing. It was an impulse purchase as it was on sale and I was just intrigued enough to wonder what it was. And, well, I think I know now. It's still a bit of an odd device though. I might just have it play videos in the background. Just not with that speaker connected obviously. Because even if I found a better controller, I'm not sure I'd use it to play NES games. Not with that emulation. So yeah, if you have any ideas, let me know. And with that, I think it's time to end the video. If you found this interesting or have any additional information on the device, then you can also let me know in the comments. And before I turn it off, I was the Goldfish, that was the Fami XPCOM, and this was Goldfish on Games. Thanks for watching this fun look at an odd device. I've checked out a few family clones in the past, so there should be links on the screen that you can watch if it takes your fancy. Or you can use the buttons under the video to let YouTube know what you really thought of the video. So goodbye for now and I hope to see you again soon.